Good evening everyone, I'm Ruben and today I'm cooking with a Thermomix at Luzon's beautiful show gallery. You may have seen me on TV recently uh, on MasterChef and I'm one of the finalists this year. Prior to joining MasterChef, I was working as a pharmacist but I had a big passion for cooking and, well, cooking and eating in general. For myself, I personally like to cook with more, I guess, Western ingredients and I'm more familiar with that as well. But I also really love vegetables. Uh, and you know that is like the core of my cooking. So for today, I'll actually be cooking a vegetable risotto dish which is featuring a butternut squash right over here. You know there's so much that you can do with vegetables and today I'm going to use this beautiful vegetable and prepare it four different ways in my risotto. And I'm making my life a lot easier with this trusty Thermomix. Before I start, do like and share the link to this beautiful tutorial with your friends and learn how to cook this risotto for yourself. The recipes will be shared after the show, so just sit tight and enjoy the cooking. By the way, for today's tutorial, we'll be giving away a few sets of this beautiful Luzon tableware, so stay tuned to find out how you can get them. Watch out for the questions in the comments and be the fastest to get your hands on one of these beautiful plates. So let's get started with the cooking. To start off uh, with this beautiful butternut squash risotto, I'm first going to use actually the beautiful seeds here. These are edible and actually really tasty. So you can toast them off in the oven with some salt and olive oil. And that's what I'm going to do right now. So I have the seeds here. I'm just going to add it to a bowl. So I'm just going to put some salt and some oil and give it a good mix. So you can use all the seeds in the squash. You could prepare a bit more if you're cooking for more people. So besides the squash seeds, I'm also going to roast some pumpkin to give added texture and a bit of flavour I guess to the pumpkin so that that will go into the dish right at the end as a garnish. And so normally for the squash, most people just use the flesh, the nice orange bit. Uh, but I've just showed you that even the seeds can be used. And not to forget the skins as well, you know these are great flavour and some people actually roast them with the skins itself and it's really nutritious and tasty so I'm going to remove some of that and I'll use it as a garnish later when I deep fry them so I'll just be peeling off a little bit of the skin of the butternut squash Alright, so I'll be cutting them into nice wedges. You don't want them too small. You know, if not, they're going to burn in the oven. Alright, so you just want to chop them as evenly as you can. Um, you know, if you're at home, don't worry too much. If it's, it's a bit uh, uneven, you know, at the end of the day, it's just going to go in your stomach anyway. So I have these cubes of butternut squash. So what I'm going to do is the same as what I did to the seeds. So a bit of salt, a bit of black pepper, and some olive oil, and roast it together with the seeds. So I'll just pass these ingredients to my assistant, who will help me roast this off in the oven. For risotto, the main component would actually be the stock, and that's really important. So for myself, I want the butternut squash to be like the real hero of this dish. And I'm actually making sort of like a butternut squash vegetable stock. So it's going to be like almost like a puree but a lot lighter so that you know when you pour it in it doesn't burn and like clump together. So I'll be doing using the Thermomix to make the entire stock and it comes together in like really really quickly about 15-20 minutes and your stock is ready. The ingredients are all pre-measured but you could use the weighing scale function on the Thermomix to weigh out everything so you know the recipe will definitely not go wrong. We're gonna save a little bit of time by using the Thermomix to chop up some of my garlic and my onions. Alright, and now we're just going to go turbo on this thing so it gets the onions and garlic chopped up pretty finely. And I'm going to go for two seconds. So that's all you really need. You don't really need them too fine because the thermal makes to do the work for you. Okay, so I have the butternut squash all prepped and ready to go. You don't need to cut them too fine as well because the Thermomix, again, is going to do the job for you. Just, so just cut them up, you know, roughly. All 
Alright, so just adding it in. So this is some regular olive oil, you can use canola oil or grape seed oil. All right, so we're going to add this in and it's going to stir fry. All right, of course, some salt for seasoning. So I'm just going to actually give this a quick pulse just to roughly chop up everything again uh, before starting the cook. So I'm just going to set the turbo for about 2 seconds again. So now I'll start cooking everything that's in this thermal mix and I'll do that manually, you know, just for my own preference. So I'm setting that for about 5 minutes and now it's just going to do its thing. Alright. Oof, smelling good. Okay, so now just going to show you guys. Quite softened up actually within this time. But you know, when you make a pure, almost like a puree, you want it really, really soft, so it just becomes really smooth. Alright, so what I'm going to do now is to actually make it into a stock. So obviously we need some vegetable stock. We're using some homemade stock powder, and that's just going to go in. And now we're just going to add, so I think about 700 grams of water. Alright, so just give it a final scrape down before you start cooking. So that's done. Alright, so now we're just going to cook it a little bit more. So I'm going to go at 100 degrees again. Alright, so that's going to be running for 10 minutes. And once that's done, we're just going to blend it to it's really smooth. And then we can move on to making the actual risotto. So for myself, I really like to cook with vegetables. And I find that a lot of times, people are not using them to their fullest capacity. So I really wanted to hero the butternut squash and show that you can manipulate it in different ways to bring out different flavours and textures. For yourself at home, if you want to do variations on this dish, what you can do is actually add spices. Some people maybe they find that you know, they want to give it a bit of an Asian twist. You can add even things like laksa paste or like uh, green curry paste just to give it that, you know, that depth of flavour and a little bit of difference. Alright, so now everything is cooked and soft. Now we're going to make it really smooth by blending it at speed 10. You know, you only need maybe 15-20 seconds. Alright, so you can see that the stock is ready. Alright, so this is a very, very loose texture. You don't need to be as thick as a puree. If not, later you'll get gluggy inside the thermal mix when you're making the risotto. So it has to be like pretty smooth. So we're gonna set this aside and we'll start on with the risotto itself. Alright, at home if you just have one thermal mix mixing bowl, you know, wash it, get it ready for this. Or have a second bowl. So obviously besides the rice, a stock, usually for risotto, there is cheese and today I'm using parmesan. Personally, I actually don't really like cheese all that much. However, if you, if you love your cheese, feel free to use more. I'll be using some of it here right now and I'll be grating some fresh parmesan after that as well. Alright, so you're going to blitz this parmesan into like little bits so that it can be, it'll be used in the cooking and also to finish off later. So you want to get them really nicely chopped up. Alright, so I'm going to go turbo speed 2 on this twice, so it gets really fine. Alright, done in just a couple of seconds. Let me just show you how it looks. Look at that, so fine. Alright, so for myself, I'm going to use some of it in the cooking right at the start. And the, the other half of it, I'm going to put in only at the end. Alright, so I'm just going to transfer about half of it back into this little container. All 
Alright, so we'll keep that for later. And obviously, uh, for risotto, shallots or onions uh, is usually the base besides the rice. So I'm just going to pop that into the thermal mix and blitz it again. So you want the onions finely chopped, so you're going to blitz it again. Alright, scraping, scrape it down with a spatula and we're going to do that one more time. Alright, look how finely chopped that all is. Alright, that's definitely a lot faster than I would do it. And now you just scrape it down so that later when you cook, everything sort of at the bottom and mix as well. Okay. So now we're going to apply saute our onions with a mix of butter and olive oil. And some olive oil. Alright, so we are going to go at 100 degrees again for about 2 minutes. Alright, I'm just going to put it there just for safety. Mmm, your onions always smell good. So now we're going to add in the rice, which is the base of the risotto. You can use cannaroli or any other risotto rice you want. For the perfect risotto, remember not to wash the rice before cooking. Right, give it a, a bit of a mix so that everything mixes well and nothing really sticks to the bowl or sticks to each other actually. I'll let the thermal mix continue doing the mixing and I'll maybe give it a little scrape once that is done. Alright, so we're just going with the same setting to sauté the rice again. So 100 degrees for about 2 minutes. Okay, so at this stage, we're going to add the white wine. For those of you who don't consume alcohol, personally, I think that the best replacement here will be dashi stock. Or if you want to, you could use chicken stock or vegetable stock. Alright, so I'm going to add the wine in and you really want it to evaporate. So I'm going to set my thermal mix on Veroma setting. Okay, so now the risotto rice has been sautéed off. So now we're going to add the main component, which is butter squash stock. Alright, so I've, I've weighed it out already. Uh, now I'm just going to add it in and let it cook for about 12 minutes. Okay, all good. Alright, I think I'm going to actually give it a bit of a stir so that, you know, it doesn't... The rice doesn't just fall to the bottom. Okay, I think that's good. Okay, so we're going to let that cook for about 12 minutes. Okay, so this is the great part about the thermal mix. Once that is running, I can focus on my other garnishes. So for the garnish, I'm going to do some crispy squash skins some fried sage, and some prawns for a little bit of protein. Alright, so let's get started. We're going to get in the skins now and get them crispy, yeah? And we'll season after that. So you just want to get like a nice colour on it. And you can move the oil a little bit so that, you know, it browns quite evenly. That's looking nice. That looks nice. Crispy and brown. Just gonna add a seasoning of salt just to give the 
skin's a bit of a nice flavor as well. And we can just mix it up later. Okay, so now we're going to start frying off the sage, getting it crispy as well. And then we'll strain it on a paper towel again. Alright, so you want your sage to look nice and crisp. Alright, I'm just going to strain it here on some paper towels. I'll just throw this first. Huh? Alright, so the risotto is basically done. So we're just going to finish up everything uh, with the prawns and then we'll plate up. Now you don't want your prawns to cook for too long. I've already deveined them. Um, so yeah, once they're cooked, flip them over on the other side, then finish it off. I'm just going to add a bit of seasoning now. You don't need to put too much salt on this, but you know, some salt is always good for flavour. So I'm going to flip the prawns. Look at that. Alright, so it's ready out into there to drain. Alright. So now that all my ingredients are ready, it's time to plate up. And this is actually my favorite part because you can get really creative with it. And you know what they say when your eye eats first. So the first thing you need to do for your plating is obviously the plate itself. And I'm just gonna get some really nice plates from Luzern right behind me. So there's quite an array of plates just behind me. But what I really want to look out for, because it's a risotto, it has to be quite flat. And there should be contrast because, you know, when you think about plating, you want your food to pop. And since the risotto is a bit of a yellowish orange color, you don't want to pick a plate that's too neutral in color. Like, like it's too similar in color, like the pinkish or the light orange ones. I'm going to go for something really classic. This is from the Mod series and I actually really like this plate uh, because there's a little dip there and you know when you put the risotto there there's a bit of you know that creates a bit of like height difference and when you put your garnishes it really pops off the plate. So this is what I'm going for. For the other plates as well um, sometimes you want to pick something that's a little bit textured because when you plate and on the camera it looks really nice to have like little that little bit of colour and you know you don't always need to have garnishes just for the sake of garnishes sometimes the plate really does the job for you so first thing you want to get is your risotto all right so that this has been running for quite a while um, and it's all ready you know it's supposed to be smooth like lava essentially and you know when you set it down it should be able to fall nicely so I'm just gonna leave some ladles of the risotto. So what I like to do is I like to hit the risotto in the center. All right. And after that, just spread it around. And you know, give it a couple of taps because that will really like help to smoothen it out without you having to like really stir it or mix into it. All right, so I usually start with the biggest item first. So I'm going to go with the prawns. You know, and the thing about plating is sometimes odd numbers really look better. So that's what I'm going to do today. I'm just going to have three prawns, all right? And they're just going to sit maybe around the center. Now you can have them facing like any particular direction you want. Sometimes them facing in a similar direction works for you. Sometimes it doesn't. So today I'm just going to go with whatever feels right for me. If you remember earlier, I roasted some pumpkin in the oven and also toasted the pumpkin seeds. Now, this is what I want. You want it a bit of like that dark roasted flavor because it's going to add a bit of bitterness and gives contrast to the sweetness uh, of the butternut squash risotto. Now, some of you might think this is a little bit dark. I like it that way. If you want to go a little bit lighter, then just bake, just bake it in the oven for a shorter time. All right. So the next part is the sage because that is the real greenery and will give the contrast on this plate. 
So you really want to think about colours actually when you play it. Because food can really look very inviting, you know, just with a pinch of colour. Alright, so I'm just going to put the sage around the plate. So now I want to finish off this dish with the crispy skins of the butternut squash. And look, it's so nice and glossy. And you know, sometimes when it's a little bit rough around the edges, it does give a lot of texture to the dish and makes it look really pretty. So what I'm going to do, I'm just going to lay it around the dish. You know, you don't to have to have it in like a specific spot. Whatever looks nice, you can just put it there. I'm almost done. I'm just going to add a final flourish of freshness and that's going to come from the lemon rind. So I'm just going to go very lightly just above it and I'm going to add some parmesan cheese after that. Alright, so just lightly, not too much, that will be fine. I've said I don't really like cheese that much but you know, I think it's absolutely essential for this. So this is the final product. This is my butternut squash risotto with the butternut squash prepared four ways and served with prawns and crispy sage. I really hope you try this for yourself. It's really, really good. The wonderful thing about the Thermomix is that I can cook the risotto in the device and not do anything while I prepare my garnishes. You know, and look, that looks really appetizing. So thanks for tuning in tonight. I'm Ruben and I hope to see you guys around.